Hello YouTube, Ninja Midget here. Um, it's February in Wisconsin, which means I'm bored. And this is going to be a project that I'm going to do over the next days, weeks, whatever. Where's my, where's my camera? Um, this is a stock for a 22 rifle. It's a single shot 22 rifle. Uh, the one that I learned on when I was a kid. So it's an old gun. It's a Winchester. Where's my old button plate here? Yeah, Winchester repeating arms. So, old 22 rifle. And I want to get this a nice finish. You can see there's the wood grain on there. It's not a very smooth finish. This is the finish that this thing has had since it came out of the factory. So... I'm going to be stripping this down. I'm going to I'm not going to show all the processes. There's so many guys out there that do that and have done it better than I could. I'm not set up for that. Um but I'm going to be stripping it with some of the citrus stripper and then I'm going to go ahead and raise the uh grain of the wood with steam and then I'm going to I believe this is a piece of walnut, so I don't think I'll need to stain anything. I'll have to see when I get this uh all this finish removed. <laughs> And uh, then I'm going to be applying probably six or eight coats of true oil on this so that it will look nice and smooth. Hide all that grain. It'll look something like, that's just a test that I got going. That's a fresh coat. I think that's coat number five of true oil on this. I'm doing a comparison of tongue oil. Tongue oil. Coats of tongue oil. See how that turns out. Coats of boiled linseed oil. And uh, I'm in the process of doing that right now. So that's just a little side project I did that I want to do some comparisons on, see how it is with moisture resistance and things like that, durability. Um, but I will, after each stage, I'll, I'll do a little video on this just to just to show where it's at and how it's changed. Uh, so it's not going to be a long video in the end. I'll just string them all together. And uh, hopefully it'll turn out nice. Okay, YouTube. Get my light over here. A little more light on this. Okay, stock all cleaned off. Now all the uh, the finish on it came off easy enough. For guns like this, you just uh, put some of the citrus clean on it, let it sit for 45 minutes, an hour. I think it was 45 minutes, and wipe it off with rags. Everything comes off nice wood finish here or nice bare wood ready to be worked on I did notice that there was a dent where is that where's that dent oh that's the wrong side there's a dent right around here where is it right there like you can't see it it's a little dent but the fibers aren't broken so I'll be able to steam that out and this right here this is something that was finished over at the factory. So this is something that happened before they put the finish on, because the finish was just straight over that. And it looks like that is, uh, it looks like it broke the wood fibers, so I cannot steam that out. I'll have to go ahead and fill that in with some clear epoxy, as well as there's a couple areas down here where I'm going to go ahead and fill those in with epoxy as well. I didn't see anything else on this, but what I'm going to do is going to steam out that one dent on this side, and then I'm going to go ahead and fill in these couple areas um, with epoxy, and I'll do a little video on that because I saw a uh, gunsmith video, someone showing how to fill in these, uh, these types of uh, defects, and uh, it works really great, and you can't even see it when it's, when it's done and finished. Um, so I'll do a little quick video on that, see if I can find something to hold my phone up here. Um, because that's really helpful. You just use five-minute epoxy, two-part epoxy on that. Uh, and that will be it. Then I'll go over it with a light sanding, and then I'll be on to the true oil. Okay, YouTube, another little update on this. I just got done steaming this. Not sure if it'll show in camera, but the wood is definitely lighter after it's been steamed and that's because it's opened up all the pores in the wood and some spots there they're still drying 
I literally just brought this downstairs from steaming it over the kitchen sink. The dent that was in there, that was right up in here somewhere, I can't even find it now, uh, that's all gone now. Uh, that, of course, is still going to need to be repaired. I'll do a quick video on that, as well as the, uh, the cracks up here that are still going to need to be repaired. But other than that, stock looks to be in good shape. And I know there's lots of guys out there that have already done videos on why you steam, but basically, just briefly, it's so you can open up the pores and raise up the surface of the wood. And uh, that's also called whiskering the wood because these little fine fibers will come up and you can feel them if you run your fingers across it. Um, and then you go over that with some fine uh, sandpaper or steel wool to uh, cut that back down. And it just makes it so that the, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, the wood will take stain or whatever finish you're going to put on it that much better and it'll soak right into the pores of the wood that much better especially if you have a dense wood like I believe this is a walnut stock on this one um, so I'm gonna let this dry out a little bit more before I start doing work on the uh, fixing the uh, these uh, dings on here and uh, I'll do a video of that okay YouTube back to do some filling on this I have this little imperfection in my stock here go ahead and rough up in the bottom of it a little bit make sure that there's going to be some good fresh wood for the epoxy to stick to and then I've got my five minute two minute epoxy here that I already mixed up because this is fast acting stuff and all you're gonna need is the two-part epoxy I use the five minute stuff and some masking tape so what you're gonna do you're gonna take you're going to lay some epoxy in here. You don't have to worry about being neat. You don't want to slather it on, but you want there to be a little bit of a bubble on there so that you don't have any air pockets. You want it to be a little bit proud of the surface there. And that's the epoxy. Then you're going to take your tape, your masking tape, and let me see if I can do this in a way that's going to actually be able to see it good. You're going to lay it down one side first, and you're going to slowly push it down over the surface, spreading it out as you go. And again, you don't need to worry about being uh, immaculate with this. After this is all set up, we're going to peel it off. And then we're going to go about sanding the stock and we're just going to go ahead and sand this even with the stock when that's done you won't even be able to tell that it was there um, if I've done it right of course I, I found this from a uh, uh, another uh, a gunsmith video uh, but I got a few minutes to work with this epoxy on here and I got a couple of repairs so I'm going to go ahead and turn this off now okay a little update video on taking out this Get that to stop bouncing around repairing this uh, this gouge that I had in here the uh, epoxy is all cured up all you do is go ahead and take off the uh, the masking tape and there it is all filled in now I'm just gonna go over this and sand this with some fine sandpaper and by the time I'm done staining this you won't even be able to see that so next time I do a video, I'll have this all sanded down. Okay, update on this. There is the resin filled defect. It is completely smooth. The one thing you want to do when you're sanding this is there's going to be, as you could see in the previous video, it uh, squirts out as you put the tape down because you want to make sure that you get it flush. So you want to get everything off from around here that's not the actual defect you don't want any of that epoxy resin left another note on this is that when you're doing things on rounded surface surfaces like this I had to redo this because the thick masking tape that I use the regular painters tape uh, it did not do well it wrinkled up on me 
and it just it I it it took me a long time to sand it back down to the point where I could refill it. And what ended up working for me is some of this stuff. This is a uh, masking tape that you use for models. This is modeling masking tape. Uh, it's much more pliable and elastic than um, than the other stuff. So I put several strips of this over it, and that's what ended up working. And I was able to sand it down and, and get those uh, defects taken out, and it worked great. Uh, so just note if you're going to do that on curved areas like this or in here, you want to use a different a different kind of masking tape uh, so that you don't have um, any problems like that. Learn from my mistake. Um, and let's see, I've sanded this with 220 uh, to to get down uh, these these areas, and the rest of the stock I sanded with 220. Another thing. When you're sanding on here, don't stay on, on one spot. I'm sure most of you know this if you're even watching a video like this. But you want to make sure as you're sanding you're going over areas that are not on here. Because you don't want to rub a, a channel in there. Of course, going with the grain of the wood. And it's very hard to go with the grain of the wood on something like this. When it's like it's going this way and then that way. And then it's just crazy. So just do the best that you can. Um, but next for this... And I'm going to secure it to be hung so I can hang it up. And I'm going to put my first coat of true oil on. And with that first coat of true oil, that's when these defects are going to completely disappear. Because right now, you're seeing this epoxy that's seeped into the wood and turned it that darker color like when wood gets wet. As soon as I put that first coat of true oil on, this should be indistinguishable. Unless maybe it's just the the shape in the uh, wood grain but you won't be able to feel it you won't be able to see it in any of the sheen um, it should be completely perfect after that and very tough to even pick out um, so all right well I guess I'm gonna get ready to get my first coat of true oil on this and I will do a video later okay update on my uh, 22 rifle project here that I'm working on we're finishing this stock uh, this is off of a model, a Winchester model 90, uh, Winchester model 67A, which is kind of rare these days. I was doing some research on it, didn't even realize. Uh, they're kind of rare these days, worth a little bit of money, but this is one of the ones I had since I was a kid, so this is going nowhere. I'm not planning on selling this one. Um, <clears throat> I've got two coats of true oil on it so far. You can still see the wood grain but it's definitely uh, coming along. I'm thinking probably six to eight coats of true oil. Should have this uh, in pretty good shape. And there's that mark that we had, that imperfection, um, that was at least a millimeter deep. That's all filled in. You can definitely tell it's there. It looks just more like a, um, a knot or something in the wood, but you can tell it's, it's completely flush with the surface. Uh, the cracks or scrapes that I had on here um, those are all filled in now nicely and it's looking pretty good I'm liking the way this is turning out so far um, so a, a couple uh, sideline notes on, on what I do here uh, how to hang it up uh, I got just one of the screws from the butt plate here uh, and I just punched a hole through a, a metal disc. This is a brass disc. And uh, hang it by that because with the taper on these screws, you don't want to just, I use wire to wrap around it and, and hold it. And I've uh, in the past had stocks fall off this because of this taper. So just get yourself a washer or something so you can wrap the wire around underneath this and then it's gonna go ahead and stay fixed for you while you're working on it when it's hanging up and hanging them up is definitely the best way to work on them it's just the easiest <clears throat> um, what I do uh, between coats for the true oil as I'll take some double lot steel wool and <clears throat> rub this down good um, get it to the point where it's all um, uniform and dull and take the shine out of it so you'll be able to just see the, the little uh, shiny wood grains in there but go over this good you don't want to go over it too hard but you put a good amount of of force um, 
on, on your hand as you're doing this just because you're trying to take off that little layer, that little top layer, smooth everything out so that the next coat is going to seep into the wood grain more and, uh, and start filling in um, the wood grain and give you a nice smooth finish. Um, to apply the true oil, I just pour out a little bit. I use um, just paper towels, just store brand Kirkland sig Signature, the uh, uh, Costco brand paper towels. I uh, rip one in half, fold it up, um, use use the end that is not on the rip side to uh, to apply the oil. I've never had a problem with lint um, or anything uh, with, with applying true oil in this method. I see people all the time using uh, rags and everything and I just, <clears throat> I don't, I don't see using something like that for like a one use application here. Um, I did apply true oil down inside the first two coats in here in this channel <clears throat> just because I want the wood to be protected uh, you know using solvents and, and whatever to uh, to clean the gun uh, but I'm not going to do more than two because I don't need to fill that in uh, I just wanted that uh, the wood protected on there um, a little bit so uh, that's it on the first coat you'll notice if you open up the pores properly that first coat of true oil is going to take a lot of true oil um, it's going to soak that up. You want to get it down there liberally. Um, it's easy to get some drips, so you want to watch for those on the first coat. Uh, but that uh, that first coat, you're going to use a lot more than you will in the in the following coats because the wood just drinks it up. Um, so that's it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to re re uh, apply the finish on this go ahead and do that you can see on there i'm not sure if it's showing up it looks like it is in the camera there's a couple spots that i've missed where it's a little bit dull uh that's another thing with true oil it's easy to get drips <clears throat> it's also very easy to miss spots and i i find i do it regularly i just saw a spot down here where i had missed yeah there we go there's a little dull spot right there where i missed it um Usually it's not a big deal. I mean, you just try to get it covered as 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 well as you can. Um, <clears throat> sometimes you get a spot that you missed. Uh, just try to be very thorough. Overlap your your coats or your 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 swipes when you're going when you're going past. You want to um, make sure that you're overlapping and going all the way around the gun. Um, usually there's there's no problem, but you can miss a spot here and there. And with so many coats that you're putting on, uh, it's not not a big deal I've never had any problems uh, with a with a stock looking bad as a result of missing something here or there uh, in the coating process <clears throat> so that's that's that I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and get this all done up uh, with another coat usually with true oil you can do uh, this is the den of winter in Wisconsin uh, I'm able to do three coats in a day uh, one in the morning, one in the uh, uh, lunch hour area, and then <clears throat> one in the evening. Um, that's one of the one of the benefits of using true oil over like a tongue or a boiled linseed oil. You have to let those cure for 24 hours between coats, and you don't get nearly uh, the the nice refined finish uh, like you do with true oil. So that's it for this. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off get this all done uh, and I will be posting I'll probably skip a couple of uh, do a couple of coats here a day's worth and then uh, do another video tomorrow just because all this is going to be is just filling in the wood grain so <clears throat> I will have a follow-up video okay another follow-up video here this is after the fifth coat of true oil and I've already buffed this down uh, with some double lot steel wool, but I wanted to also show you. Let me stop this from shaking here. Also wanted to show you um, a couple other steps that I do that I realized I didn't cover. First of all, compressed air works really good after sanding because that stuff just looks everywhere that dust. So, you know, compressor or compressed air in a can, whatever works great. Um, Another couple things to note on here. When you're buffing this with uh, with the steel wool, 
often you'll find there's more shine on here and it's just because you don't tend to get these areas as well so be aware of the edges and spend a little extra time on the edges I've found that there's always a little extra shine on the edges when I'm done and I go back and I give those some attention um, just so that I know I'm knocking down the surface on the edges and they're not uneven um, also, uh, I'm, I'm going for the shiny look on this, and that's going to be my end result. Is I like it nice and shiny. It's the computer geek in me. I like shiny things. Um, but you don't, if you don't like shiny, you don't have to have shiny um, with, uh, with true oil. Uh, after you get your last coat on, you can always um, go over it with uh, double lot to quadruple lot steel wool and give it a full satin finish or just a uh, partial gloss finish it's really easy to give a gun whatever kind of finish you like with true oil so just because i'm going for shiny on this uh doesn't mean that you know everyone else uh has to just because you're using true oil there's a lot that you can do to make this look however you like um so that's that i don't think there's anything else that i'm forgetting on this i'm going to go ahead and oh well um after I uh, after I blow this off uh, with the compressed air to get all the dust out, I'll hang it back up. I'll uh, go ahead and get my tack cloth and give it a wipe down with tack cloth to make sure that there's no dust on there anywhere. Um, and uh, then I'll apply the true oil on it. Um, so that's just my process. Um, I will be giving another update as soon as I have one. Okay stop this shaking here um, lots of coats of true oil in now the grain was a little deeper than I thought so it's taken a little little more to uh, fill it in but you can see it's really starting to fill in nicely you got a nice clean look to it on the edge here it's really looking nice the edge grain usually fills in faster uh, the stock is looking really good you can still see some lines there but they're very minimal maybe two more coats and this will be perfect uh, you can see this defect here that we had and that's just completely completely flush now there's no problems with it uh, it's looking good and then there's these other little gouges that I had down here that are looking really good well not good but they're flush with the surface and overall I'm really happy with how this is looking now I did because the grain ended up being a little deeper than I thought it was going to be on this after the sixth coat of true oil I did do a wet sand with 320 grit sandpaper and that helped out a lot so if you have a wood grain that's really deep and it's not filling in as quickly as you'd like uh, there's a few things you can do um, one of them is doing a wet sand on true oil uh, I've seen people also do like uh, a wet sand with a true oil type thing and, and wiping it down after that and having that uh, fill in uh, the wood grain so there's a lot out there that uh, that you can do to fill in the wood grain this is just a process that I like it's it's a lengthy process uh, but you get a really good result the uh, multiple layers of true oil just give it a nice deep finish uh, to it so that's it for this update I will give a final update uh, when I've gotten this as good as I want it to look may not be perfect but it's still looking a whole lot better than it did uh, and uh, I'll have the gun all back together then and uh, show the whole thing uh, so that should be the last video and uh, should be coming shortly okay final video on this stock refinishing pro project that I was working on uh, turned out really good still can see some of the grain I could have filled in the grain a little better prior to uh, to doing this but that's something for next time I was able to steam out a dent 
fill in a couple little imperfections with epoxy now you can't see them on the finish got my bolt all took that apart oiled it up real good put it back together gun functions good I did do some oxfo blue some Brownells oxfo blue on a couple areas of the uh, barrel just because there were some areas that were the blue was getting a little thin uh, I did also since I had the oxfo blue out I did blue that trigger that I had refinished somewhat I blued it with oxfo blue didn't want to take the time to go ahead and do it with uh, the slow rust bluing which definitely would have looked better but this you know for what it is a little 22 rifle uh, looks great looks great good little rifle I'll be teaching my kids on this rifle also one of the one of the things that I love about refinishing look at that yeah I think there's an unwritten rule somewhere that when you refinish a stock you get to put the first ding in it so when I was drifting this pin in yep it slid off the punch slid off and I got a little ding there but yeah like I said that's my right I refinished it so um, all done hope uh, this was helpful for someone out there um, this is of course just my way of doing redoing a stock and I'm always looking at uh, videos for other ways that people do it so if you got a different way um, that you use that works for you leave it in the comments you know and let me know how it is that you do it. Oh, I also did go over this with a very light um, quadruple lot steel wool. And very lightly sanded a little bit of the sheen down. Some imperfections I could feel in my fingers but couldn't see. Um, but that was the final step with this. And uh, there you have it. Can't wait to take this out and, and shoot it with my kids. All right. Thanks.